We are a mission of hope, of random acts of kindness. That's Charmaine, my name is Sharon. If you want some free inspirational gifts, that's what we give. Um, do you want to get them a t-shirt, Charmaine? What size are you, sir? A large. Okay. Do you know Jesus Christ? Absolutely. Are you living for him? Absolutely. If you die today, would you go to heaven or hell? I believe I'm going to heaven. Have you turned from your sins? Absolutely. Have you turned from things that you know is against God? Yes. You got a cigar in your hand. Uh, yes, 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 I do. Well, you know, you know that that's sin to harm your body. Um, yes, I do believe. Come on, you can talk into the mic. Yes. Yes, I, I you're, do you, you're not on the camera. Oh, okay. Here, come on over yes. so they can hear you. Yes. Because a, a um, lot of people, what's your first name? Ronald. So, Ronald, do you know a lot of people um, smoke weed, they smoke cigarettes, but you're actually killing your temple? That's what makes it sin. Okay. That's what makes it a sin. And a lot of times it's idolatry. You know what idolatry is? It's anything that you give affection to more than God. God doesn't want us to love anything more than him. Absolutely. So when you're smoking cigars and weed, I used to smoke, I smoked two packs of cigarettes a day, but then I met Jesus and got filled with the Holy Ghost. And that's the first thing he told me to get rid of because you're destroying your body, right? right? So if you want to overcome, you know where to start? Prayer. Prayer, but I got a better one, you ready? Because prayer means you're talking to God about it. God say, I want you to change your mind. When you change your mind, Ronald, then your behavior will follow. You got to change your mind first and know that it's wrong. You want us to pray for you? Absolutely. Come on, Charmaine. So look, um, Charmaine, if you step to the side, pray for Ronald. Ronald, it's real. We only get one shot at this thing. Um, we have to live clean. Jesus said the way is straight and narrow and few find that way. Do you want to be on that way? It's straight. It's narrow. Um. I mean, I feel like that I, I mean, I can always use more work, but I mean, you know, I'm always, you know, um, willing to be a better person, you know, yes. you know, for the God that I serve. Do you have a job? Yes, I have a career. I'm a truck driver. How much money are you spending on your cigarettes? Um, well, I used to smoke Newports, which I didn't put down. Uh, it's been like two months since I didn't stop smoking cigarettes. Oh. But um, these right here, I spend like a week I'd say like $9. $9 a week? Yes, ma'am. So $9 a week, nine times four is how much? Nine times four, 18, 28. <laughs> no, it's 36. <laughs> I'm trying? going somewhere with that. What I'm trying to, where I'm going with that is, you can be giving that to your fellow man to help them. With all the poverty and the things that's going on in our nation, we that have God in our lives, we want to do our best to help our fellow man and that's money that is it can be used for that because I mean, uh, <laughs> let me tell you something i used to smoke two packs a day but when i met god the holy spirit told me immediately three things stop smoking yes. stop fornicating and cover up my body in modest apparel these are the things that he told me no preacher taught me that the holy spirit did so I had to get rid of them Newports. I smoked two, two packs a day, Newport 100s. Oh, yeah. But he told me, you got to get rid of it because that's his temple. But let us pray for him. Uh, Charmaine's going to pray for him, brothers and sisters. So we're here on location uh, in, in the city of Cleveland. We're in the uh, heart of the city. And we want the people to know that Jesus Christ is not religion. Many people are deceived by religion. Religion is a deceiver if you do not have a relationship with God for real. Mental illness is taking over the lives of so many people. So many people, their minds are consumed with darkness, hopelessness. And we came today to encourage you that Jesus Christ, he is the way. He is the life for real. Religion will trick you going to church giving your money to the preachers 
is not going to save you and it will not restore you when your mind is in trouble. When your mind is in trouble, we came to tell you today how to get out because your mind is your soul. Your soul is your mind. Your mind is your psyche. And God wants you to give your mind to him. You don't have to smoke weed. You don't have to drink gin and juice. You don't have to have constant illicit sex with someone that's not your husband or your wife to get pleasure. God's saying, I'll give you what you're looking for. If you will turn from your sin, turn from those things that you know is against God. Ronald, go in peace. A great big God. You're welcome. God bless you. A great big God bless you. That was a big hug. Thank you. Go in peace and God bless. You can do it, Ronald. Because we only get one body, one body. You get one life to live. If you put poison in God's temple, you will destroy your body. You will destroy your mind. Friends, listen and hear me. The Bible teaches us all clearly. If you are a drunkard, if you take anything in your body that puts you in a stupor, it is sorcery. It's a sin, it's against your body, it's against God. And God is saying to the nation, come to me. Let me help you with your pain. Let me help you with those things that have hurt you. Because that's usually the reason why many people are smoking that weed, drinking that gin and juice, because you're trying to get through that pain. And God is saying, no, give me your mind. Never give up, never quit, seeking after the truth. The truth is Jesus Christ. It's not religion. Religion is a deceiver. It's Jesus Christ, for real. I grew up right around this corner on 37th and Longwood. I was a mess. I was a mess. But I met the true and the living God. He touched me over 30 years ago, people. 30 years ago, and here I am, still walking with God. And my mind is clear. My mind is strong because I learned what I'm trying to tell y'all today. You turn from your ways that do not please God and give him your mind. Give him your mind. We will all die. We will all die. And I don't know about you all, but I want to make it. I want to go to heaven. And Jesus said that way is straight and narrow. And few people will find it. Why? Because you have to deny yourself and pick up your cross daily and follow him. If you don't follow him, you cannot have the strength in your inner man, in your heart, in your mind, your soul. You won't have the strength to overcome the temptations in your life, the traumas in your life, the tragedies in your life. You won't have what you need to overcome because God wants you to deny yourself and still come to him when you're in pain, when you have problems. He's saying, come to me, but you got to come the way he said. You cannot come with the weed. You can't come with your girlfriends. You can't come with your boyfriends. You can't. You got to leave all that and say, God, here am I. Help me. Help me, God. Help me, God. Jesus said, let no man deceive you. Many people have been deceived by church going, religion, people who are teaching you to give money to God to get a blessing. It's a lie. God wants you to live right. See, when you live right, people, God will meet you in your darkest hour. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. I'm a witness. He will meet you in your darkest hour and help you so that you never give up and you won't quit. Because listen, many people are committing suicide. They're taking their own lives. God say, no, don't you give up. Don't you quit. Don't you give up and don't you quit. Get in your time of prayer and sit quiet with God and give him those pains and those problems. Charmaine, we should move the mic because that reverb, you can put it there. Yeah.
God said, give me your pain and your problems. Give me your pain and your problems. Because many people in these neighborhoods, you are smoking that weed, it's a trick. It's a trick. Smoking weed, blunts, drinking it, it's a trick. God said, come to me, give me your mind. I will help you. I will help you. Running after the money, it's not going to soothe your aching soul. God has appointed unto man once to die and then judgment. Everything you do every day, you have to consider the way that you take. Every single day you're in a battle. See, I got my war clothes on today. I got my bandana, got my warrior skirt on. Right, I'm trying to show y'all a picture. You got to fight every single day of your life to keep your mind right. Your soul is your mind. Your mind is your life. You don't drug it up. God don't want no drugs. He don't want no interference when it comes to your soul. Do me a favor, Charmaine. Would you hand me that fish in the truck? It's right there because I want to show y'all something. You don't need psychiatric drugs. You need to give God your mind. Your mind is your soul. See, look at this fish. Fish need water. Humans need God. 74th and, uh, what street is this, Superior? We need God. Fish cannot survive outside of water. Humans cannot survive without God. Without his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the only way. It's, it's what it is. It's like trying to get money out the bank. If you don't have a pen, you can't get in. You can't get the money. God's saying you can't access me without my son. You have tried all these strange religions. You have tried all these strange doctrines. And you still ain't got in because you need a pen. It's Jesus. Jesus Christ is not religion. Jesus Christ is the son of God. And when he touched your life, you will never ever be the same. You will never ever be the same. When a fish is out of water, it only has so much time. It flops around. That's what many of us are doing. That's why we smoking that weed and drinking that gin and juice. We flopping around. We don't have no life. Because life is Christ and God never intended humans to be apart from him. Never. He has always wanted a relationship with us. How y'all doing today? Would y'all like a random act of kindness? Listen, friends, hear me. Your mind is your soul. Your soul is your life. If you drug it up, if you sex it up. See, some people are addicted to sex because you're trying to get the dopamine. Dopamine gives you pleasure. And God is saying, apart from me, that's illegal. You got to be married. The only place God allows sex is between a man and a woman that got a ring on it. That's right. That's right. Fish will flop around before eventually they have no more life because their life is the water. The human cannot survive without God. The reason so many people are miserable because religion has deceived many people to believe that that's it. No, God wants a relationship. He wants a real relationship with his creation. Isn't it interesting that Jesus told his disciples, he said, come, thank you, Charmaine. He said, come and I will make you a fisher of men because we are like fish outside of water. No life without God. There is no life. You will suffocate on your pain, your trauma. You will suffocate. And all God is asking America is to come, turn from your ways that do not please your creator and receive and believe on Jesus Christ. Here's the problem. Many people believe on Jesus, but we don't obey his teaching. Yeah. And this causes mental illness. Mental illness is usually always tied 
to doing and thinking something over and over again that's really against God. That's right. That's what I used to do. That's what I used to do. But I've been set free. I've been set free. That's why I'm down here in this cold weather <laughs> trying to tell y'all what I know. It's real. God is saying to America, give me your mind. I will help you. I will help you. Turn from your ways that do not please him. I promise you I'm a witness. I grew up on 37th and Longwood. He touched me. I ain't never been the same. God said, give me your mind. Give me your mind. You want to get out of that bondage? You don't want to be a slave to your depression? God said, give me your mind. And believe on my son, Jesus Christ. Now, I'm going to let Sister Charmaine, who has a powerful testimony, she is going to speak her heart. But Charmaine, just like me, we were sinner women. We were arrogant, we were prideful, we was doing us. And God touched our lives. He touched us for real. How can you light a candle and hide it under a bush? You can't light a candle and hide it under a bush. That's how you know you got religion because you don't want to talk about Jesus. You don't want to talk about your story of redemption. That's how you know religion that got a hold on you. And that will drive you into a dark place of depression. There's no light there. That's right. Oh, this is a good spot. They coming and they going, God bless you, ma'am. Would you like a free random act of kindness? What about you, sir? Hear me, America. God is saying to all of us, never give up and don't you quit seeking him with your whole heart. You will find him. You will find him when you change your mind. When you change your mind, you will change your behavior. You can't change your behavior until you change your mind. Jesus wants and has said and has taught it. It is all through scripture, which most of Americans know it. He said, repent because if you don't, you will perish. Repent means change your mind. Change your mind and go the other way. That's right, Charmaine, come and give them your testimony of what God has done for you, my sister. <clears throat> All right, so I wanna ask everybody a question. And I'm certain if I ask this question, I am certain that you're gonna say yes. Many of you are gonna say yes. If I asked you, if you loved God, you say yes. Many of you would actually say, oh, I'm a Christian. I grew up in the church. My so-and-so was a pastor and I used to sing in the choir and I used to shout. That's what many of you would say. But as my good sister said, that is not a true testimony. If your testimony is that you grew up in the church, if your testimony is that, oh, I'm on the leadership team, and my pastor this, and my okay. pastor that, if oh. that's your testimony, mm. oh, brothers and sisters, you need to examine to truly see if you are in the faith. Amen. <laughs> if that's not a true testimony of Jesus Christ. All right. You see, she said that I had a testimony, and I do, but I start this off by asking you to examine yourselves to see if you are truly in the faith because I was a person who used to shout. I was a person who used to be in the choir. I was a girl who used to profess to know Christ, but that was the only testimony that I had. My testimony was not that I was born again. My testimony was not that I had changed, my, my life had changed because of the power of the Holy Ghost. Oh, I didn't even know what the Holy Ghost was. I thought the Holy Ghost was a wave that hits you in church. Oh, That's what I thought, mm -hmm. that's what many of us think. But I'm here, I'm here to tell you, I'm here to ask 
ask you rather to truly examine yourselves to see if you're in the faith because I know many of you, like I said, you're going to say that you believe. You're going to profess to be a Christian. You're going to say that you love him. Mm. Look at it like this, a marriage. If you're married to someone and your spouse says that he or she loves you, they're going to do right by you, right? Right, right. But what if your spouse continues to cheat on you? All right. What if your spouse continues to abandon you? What if your spouse continues to abuse you? Yet they continue to tell you, oh baby, I love you. I oh. love you. All right. That's the way we do God. Mm. By us professing that we're Christians, we're saying that we're married to him, that we're in a covenant with him. But yet we abandon him. We cheat on him with this, the filthy things in this world. Yet we're still professing we're in this marriage. Yet we, we really don't love him. Our hearts are really far from him. We're professing that we love him, but our hearts are far from him. That was me. That was my testimony. I grew up in church professing to know a God that I did not really know. A God that I did not know what his expectations were for me. You see that shouting and that shucking and that jiving in church? Oh, that's just performance. That was performance for me. All right. But God was telling me, Charmaine, that's a stench to me. What I want from you is your life. Brothers and sisters, God doesn't want your tithe. He doesn't want your money. He doesn't want your shouting. He doesn't want all of this. He wants you. He wants your life. He wants you to present your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and acceptable to him. That's what he wants. The reason I got it wrong was because this world continued to say that God was only love. Oh yes, my brothers and sisters, he is love. He is a God that loves us. That's why we're here right now. Oh, by his grace and yes, his mercy yes. and his love that we're here right now to hear the word of the Lord. He is love. But God is also a just God. He is not a man that he should lie. And his word tells us that the wages mm. of sin is death. death. Oh, that hit me like a ton of bricks when I finally came to Christ and I realized that I was walking on death row, God. continuing to sin and thinking that I was going to be accepted by this God whose expectations were that I live a life that was holy. Ah. Uh. Mm. Thinking that Oh, when I get to heaven, I'm going to no, no, the wages of sin is death. What does that mean, brothers and sisters? That means that if we continue to sin against a holy God, he would be righteous, righteous, because he is just and his word will not lie. He would be righteous and send us to hell. Let that sink in. For those of you who do not truly follow him, you are examining right now your hearts. Let that sink in. Oh, but the good news, <laughs> the good news is that you still got time. Yes. You still got time. Yes. Yes. The Hallelujah. salvation is for today. Oh, don't, don't let the enemy fool you. Don't you wait to that New Year's service. Don't you wait till 2023. Don't you wait. Salvation is for today. It's for today. The good news is we hear it all the time. We hear it all the time, but do we really believe it? The good news is that for yes. God so loved the world that he gave yes. his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but 
can have everlasting life. But do we believe it? Do we receive it? Are we receiving that, brothers and sisters? Or are we just tricking ourselves? Are we just telling ourselves, oh, I'm good, I'm going a, I'm to a just, you know, get right. I'm, I'm going to get myself together. Oh, you cannot get yourself together even if you try. You need the power of the Holy Ghost. Ha! You must be born again of the water and of the Spirit of God. Ha! You see, belief is an action word. It requires action on yes. your part. I'm not talking about works of going to church. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about membership. I'm not talking about dancing and shouting hey! and all of these things. Hey! I'm not talking about that. No. Your works is your sacrifice. Your works is your giving of yourself. Your works is, I don't want this life anymore because guess what? It's miserable. I want you. Hey. I want you, God. That is your work. But the Bible tells us works without faith, faith without works is dead. That is the works, brothers and sisters. Romans 12, 1, presenting yourself as living sacrifices. That is the works. That's it. But we got to get to that part where we are not lying to ourselves. We're not faking it anymore. We're not posting pictures on Instagram, posting pictures on, on Facebook of our vacations and pretending and showing the masses that we're also happy, but we're miserable. Like my sister said, we're depressed. We hate our lives. We got to get to that point when we're real with ourselves. When we're real with ourselves and telling ourselves that I don't like this life anymore and I don't know what to do. I've tried it all. I've tried this religion and that religion. I've tried this man and this woman. I've tried everything and counseling and I'm tired. Many of you are tired, but you keep seeking those things that will not set you free. Jesus is the only way, he's the only truth, and he is the only life. Choose him today. Try him today. Oh, I did. Hey! Oh, my sister did. Yes. And my life has never been the same. Hey. Try him today. Try him today.